Hey YouTube, what's happening? Chris here. Want to bring you guys a quick update on Litecoin. Right now we're at $44.71. We're up 0.11%. There's some important points I want to talk to you all about today. And I just want to tell you the fight continues. And the reason why I've had such emphasis, and you can look back at the videos I've done past few days, it's all been talking about this 200 day moving average. And do you see the fight? So this doji candle that's being put in right now on top of this 200 day moving average, it's the fight between the bulls and the bears. The bulls are saying, I want to continue to move up. The bears are saying it's not happening. And that's how you have to picture it, is that fight. Just like when we see these long wicks up here, that's the bulls trying to push up from this candle. You see where the close was here? And then this is where it opened. So the bulls tried to push up and then the bears said not today and got pushed back down. And this is the way that you have to look at these things. So. I'm going to be here to try to help everyone the best I can. Remember, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not a professional in this. I'm never going to say that I'm a professional in this because I believe in the cryptocurrency space. The way that it is, it's the wild, wild west. You're riding a wild Mustang and everything can be textbook and it can do the exact opposite. So be very careful of people who are saying that they know exactly what's going to happen, this or that, because anything can happen. That's why at this channel, we have a plan for the upside, the downside and the sideways. We're always prepared, just like right now. This could continue to move sideways for a while. That could very well happen. You know, guys, this could also here turn into some type of a bear flag that drops down into my target zone there. That could happen. We could have a reverse BART where we move sideways like this, and then we go back up and we try to test this. Those are all the possibilities, and that's what we're going to get into today. So if you could like, subscribe, if you enjoy these Hit that notification bell. I try to get them out almost every day. Share, and uh, we're trying for 100 likes, guys. Been killing it for me. I'm, I'm beyond thankful. Helping this channel grow. I'm amazed that we're almost at 6,000 subscribers, but I'm really hoping that you guys get some value out of this channel. That's not just like some other channels that are clickbait channels or this or that. I really want you to learn because that's what I'm trying to do. This is my journey. I'm trying to learn. So let's dig into this. Guys, what we're seeing here, now we're going to start down on the RSI. You see how we're still having the lower highs. So I drew this trend line here. All right, so we're we're descending right there. Now, the bottom that I'm wanting to hold is going to be around that 49 on the RSI. If we lose that, which is this trend line here, then I would look down to around the 42 area. And that would definitely, if we went down to the 42 area, that would coincide with this 50 moving average in blue along with the box here where my target zone would be for a potential bounce. This trend line has been established now since December 14th. So this short term trend is trying to turn into an intermediate term trend. Then it tries to turn into a longer term trend. And that's how it has to, has to happen, guys. You know, it starts small, then, then medium, and then it goes to that longer term. But this has been a strong trend line. We have this gap in between. You guys know if you've been on this channel, we were talking about trend lines and how when there's these big gaps like that, it actually makes it stronger. And this trend line isn't extremely steep. The steeper the trend line, the weaker it, weaker it is. So at this pitch here, this is actually a very nice pitch for it to continue. We'll have to see what happens, though. A lot of guys would treat this like a concrete wall and say if it goes down there, that's where I'm going to buy next. For me, I want to see some confirmation because remember, if we start to see candle closes below this trend line, then we're going to be in some trouble. We could start moving down to first it'd be this 100 moving average. We'd have to see if we could hold that. And then it would be down here around that $30 where we have a lot of support in here where we had a lot of fighting. Do you see all this fighting? And then we had that blast off. And that's how it happens. But we're still seeing decreasing volume. So you see volume going down. And this looks like it could be a potential bear flag. So just keep that on your radar because you have this long pull and then if we moved sideways, bear flags, you want basically the amount of days to be under 20 for them to be valid and then you would have that drop. So we could move like this for the next five days before we make a move down or like I said, the BART and move up and then we, have, we could potentially have that double top or we could get through that. And the double top would put us around off the real bodies around that 5117. We need to get through that with conviction, with power, because up above that, we're going to be looking at around $56 is going to be a very strong overhead resistance that Litecoin is going to have to deal with. So keep that in mind as well. But these moving average are just so important. You see this 20 moving average now flattening out. The 200 day moving average is flattened out. And what's going to happen is the 20 going to bounce off it and start falling down. Or 
is the 20 going to cross over it and we get one of those golden crosses and that's what helps push us up to this next leg. So in my last video I said patience is the number one thing right now and I still believe that. I'm sitting here being patient, I'm watching the market the best that I can and I'm also going through time frames and that's what we're going to go through next. So we're on the day now and we're going to work our way down. We're going to go to the 12 hour and then like the 8, the 4, the 1 and see what's happening with these moving averages. All right. So let's go with the 12 hour first and pay attention to the moving averages. All right. So we lost the 20. See the 20 here is acting as overhead resistance and that's looking more like a bear flag. Here's our pull, our decreasing volume and another leg down that could happen. First, we'd have to see if we'd get supported around 42.72. Off that, what is that, guys? That's the 50 moving average right here. So now let's go to our 8-hour. So what's that showing is we're losing our moving averages right now. We're losing a little bit of strength due to this sideways move. And it's looking more like that bear flag. So be careful. Um, let's go to the 4-hour. There you go. Now we've lost 100. And now we're looking at the 200 for support, and that'd be around that $40 again. That's You know, this is the hot spot, guys. You see where my box is at, where I'm looking. You know, we're also having a little bit of, di not so much divergence, but we're having higher lows on the RSI here, and our price is just kind of moving sideways. So maybe we could get a move up, but we have all these moving averages now overhead. You have to keep that in mind. So from going to the day to the four hour, we have been weakening. So that's why I said I wouldn't be surprised if we did have a little bit more of a drop, which isn't bad, guys. We could get a beautiful bounce off this 200-day moving average here and then continue the move. The reason why, if we go back to the day chart here, all right, the reason why I was saying this, remember when we really started getting pushed up and I was starting to look at this RSI and I said, you know, guys, it's probably going to need a nice pullback so we can get over that $56. That's what I like to look for, and that's why I think being more conservative in the space is going to be better because you really want to wait for confirmation. There's so many fake outs, and you see this is going to be strong right there, 56.17. That's going to be strong overhead resistance that we're really going to have to pay attention to. And then on the downside, obviously these moving averages, but support, we would want to look at around that $40.66. If we don't see that, then we definitely would have that drop down into the 37 range. These are my targets, and this is what I'm seeing. You know, a good healthy pullback even from here would not hurt Litecoin as long as we hold this trend line. I can't emphasize that enough that that trend line is so very important. And look at this. We want to see these hold as well, and now we're underneath. You see this long RSI trend line here? We went underneath. It looks like we're trying to get back up. And we're going to have to see what happens because sometimes you break down through trend lines. Then you'll come back. You'll test it. Then you'll have a further move down. Sometimes you just completely break out. And other times you'll have fake outs where you'll go up here and then you'll drop down through. And that's why I said in this space, no one really can consider themselves an expert because anything can happen. And if people are telling you, you know, this way or that way, just be cautious. And that's all I'm saying. You know, really make up your mind. And also start to look at these areas and say, you know, in terms of long-term investing, if you want to be long, look at Litecoin and all the things that it's doing in the space and the adoption and everything it's getting. Guys, it's at $44 right now. Could it go down to 30 Absolutely. But we're getting to the point with Litecoin, especially with the halving and all that, that you could wake up tomorrow, really, and Litecoin could run $20. And then we have a pullback to $50, you know what I mean? And then you just, you, you don't get it. And you'd have to wait till that next higher high, higher low to jump in. But then it's at a higher price if you're long-term investing. If you're trading, that's different. It doesn't really matter as long as you're catching that volatility and you're playing it. So these are the things that I'm wanting to teach you on this channel is trading. I've done this for about one year, maybe one year, two months, somewhere in there uh, of really studying, going through all these books, learning as much as I can, you know, I've learned a lot in this space over the last year and a half. I know you guys have probably learned a lot in the last year and a half. And if you've went through this bear market that we've went through, you're never going to forget it. The things that you've learned, man, they're going to help you because this is such a young space. It's so early and there's going to be more market cycles. 
And with those market cycles, you're going to have experience for the next group of people who could FOMO the top of this next bull market. And then they're having to deal with that big retracement that we would know is coming. And we took our profits and we're sitting back and we're saying, hey, I'm going to enjoy my profits. And I'm also going to put some aside so that when it gets down near the bottom again and it retraced 80, 75 percent, whatever, I'm going to start buying back in and think how many more I could buy. That's the mindset, in my opinion, that you have to have in this space and you have to take it head on and you have to say I'm gonna go after it you have to go after in this space because everybody in this space this market is trying to take your money and you have to try to take it out of the market you have to try to take it from the market so you're kind of like if you do it a football analogy you're kind of like I played baseball, basketball, and football, and I was a wide receiver and a cornerback. And it's always harder for the cornerback because you don't know what route the receiver is going to be running. So you're kind of like the cornerback in this market, and the market's a receiver, and you're trying to respond to what this market's doing. And yeah, you can get interceptions. Yeah, you can get deflections, great tackles, all that stuff. But you're basically going to have to ride the coattails of these big whales, these market makers. You're not a market maker. I'm not a market maker. And that's why no one can be perfect in this market. Because you can go take a P, come back, and Bitcoin lost $1,000 or gained $1,000. We've seen it happen. So, you know, guys, that's why you got to learn how to do this stuff for yourself as well. And I want to be here to teach you the best that I can. So if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll try to get maybe one or two more out today. God bless you all.